and HOD, Pediatric Government of Thavumur Medical College. Uh, it's area of interest. Women with banking, newborn care, and he is going to talk about sudden cough, the two, golden period of the periodic community during this period. Over, oh, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I thank IAP TNSC for giving me this opportunity. I thank my teacher, Professor Nenjurian, sir, who was my teacher in the first, next to my name, MD Pediatrics. My dissertation was done more by Nenjurian, sir, rather than me. He is responsible for myself getting the MD Pediatrics degree. Second line, head of the department. He was the head of the department in our institution, Dharmapuri Medical College Hospital, three to four years ago. So we want to want to be like him. It's very difficult to be like him, but. We will, but we are trying to follow his footsteps as an head of the department. And the last line, IAP TNSC President Elect 2021. Also, I am inducted to him. Thank you. I will go to the presentation. More than foreign body in the lung, airway foreign body would be a better terminology. And high induction of suspicion and the pediatrician's role in airway foreign bodies is the topic I am going to speak now. Yeah, the common risk factors encountered in children are the child's airway is more vulnerable to obstruction than adults. Uh, the smaller diameter of the airway compared to that of adults responsible for significant blockage by small foreign bodies too and the underdeveloped ability of the children to swallow food as compared to adults. Mucus and secretions form a seal around the foreign body and is more difficult to dislodge by forced air by the child. And the force of air generated by a cough in an infant or in child is less effective in dislodging an airway obstruction in a child. I am not going to show you interventional pulmonary slides like vinola foreign body and all my topic will be mainly oriented towards the clinical approach and uh, when all you have to suspect foreign body the most dangerous complication is complete airway obstruction where there will be sudden acute onset of respiratory dis distress which will be severe as noted by an inability to speak or talk also. But I have not seen such case in my experience in our institution. Probably such cases may not reach the hospital too. And as a postgraduates or a pediatrician who are all on duty, what I think is the first and foremost they should be well aware of is the, about the history of the History, a good history taking will help you to diagnose 50% of the cases. The only three possibilities are that yes, there was an any uh, there was an history of aspiration, or no, no, there was no definitive history of aspiration, or the parents may say we don't know. Presentation usually is like that when acute onset of cough in an apparently normal child. There may be history of choking. Presentation may be they may bring the child immediately or delayed presentation is also common. The three stages of symptoms. The initial event which would have been seen by the parents. Violent paroxysms of coughing, choking or gagging which lead to possible airway obstruction immediately when the foreign body is aspirated. 
Next one is the asymptomatic interval. The foreign body during this period, the foreign body may get dislodged and relodged or may even become migratory. It will lead in course of time to the fatig fatigability of the reflexes and the immediate irritating symptoms and persistent cough will subside once the foreign body finally gets lodged into some area. The symptoms of complications also you can see when it is a delayed presentation. It can be an obstruction or erosion of the foreign body may lead to infection. The symptoms may be fever, recurrent or persistent cough, hemoptysis, then pneumonia and atelectasis futures may also be seen. Then the next most important part in the diagnosis is the clinical examination. You can ascertain about another 20 to 25 percent of cases with the history and the examination. The airway may be stable or unstable. If it is unstable, you have to stabilize the child first with oxygen support to correct shock if any. Then general examination, these are the things you have to watch carefully. This may will be there by default. You should look for strider, you should look for tachypnea and signs of oxygen desaturation we will be looking into. Before interventioning you have to stabilize these things and then what I feel in my personal experience is the air entry, the air, if you are able to identify the air entry along with the history you can diagnose about 80% of cases. Air entry may be present or absent or diminished and air entry may be equal or unequal which is called as differential air entry. In central foreign body and all, air entry may be equal on both sides but diminished on both sides. You have to compare with the air entry of a similar child of a similar age group. Normal child you have to compare. Then added sound. Added sound this is the most important added sound you have to look in clinical examination. Invariably the pathology usually lies on the side of the decreased or absent air entry. By this clinical examination you can able to localize the location of the foreign body. Then investigation. X-ray chest, X-ray chest expiratory film is the primary investigation and this only investigation alone will help you to identify and if you are able to interpret it properly identify about 80% of airway foreign bodies. Once again I stress X-ray chest expiratory film is the primary investigation of choice. The foreign body may be radio opaque or non opaque. You can you will, you will be able to locate the foreign body with your history as well as your clinical finding. The, you, you can have three presentations. There may be partial obstruction to the airway which may be unilateral or bilateral and you can have no obstruction at all with the foreign body and you can, and you can have a complete obstruction unilateral or near total if it is in the trachea or at the carina. The other two investigations CT scan of the chest plain or contrast though in our institution we do have facility for virtual bronchoscopy. We don't rely on these two investigations. These things help, these things are helpful in the remaining 10 to 20 percent of the cases in establishing the diagnosis, diagnosis of foreign body airway. We all know this is the normal chest x-ray. I don't want to elaborate and discuss on this. This is the inspiratory chest x-ray. Very difficult to take an X-ray in a child either in an inspiratory position or in an expiratory position. This is the forced expiratory chest X-ray. This is usually taken, you usually take the AP view and you ask the parent or the attender to apply a very gentle pressure over the anterior abdominal wall while taking the X-ray. This is the inspiratory and forced expiratory chest X-ray on comparison. You see there is aeration, 
in the inspiratory film that is a film with no foreign body that takes ray on the left side and you see the forced expiratory film due to partial airway obstruction and air trapping on the right side right hemithorax while applying pressure the air on the normal side gets leaked out so you can easily distinguish the foreign body in the right probably the right main bronchus this forced expiratory chest x-ray is very useful in diagnosis of airway foreign bodies when you have a suspicion approach you have to diagnose and stabilize the child i risk concern which i feel this is the most very most and very difficult part in management of an airway foreign body then treatment goes without saying viscopic removal of the foreign body then post removal carrying either in pacu or what depend upon the post removal status and then the follow up i will discuss about three to four cases where on the whether there is any obstruction or no obstruction or partial obstruction likewise first scenario one year female child with cold and cough for one day vomiting two times after eating cake by 7 pm there was no definitive history the child had respiratory disease since 10 pm the history was the child was having the first birthday they were celebrating it uh, by celebrating the event by 7 pm by cake cutting and all and they have brought, they are bringing the child 10 pm to the icu the child was dyspneic and tachypneic with a decreased oxygen saturation on clinical examination we note air entry in decreased uh, air entry is decreased in left hemithorax this is the x ray you can see the gross mediastinal shift towards the left hemithorax the right hemithorax is hyperinflated air entry is diminished on the left left hemithorax the subject we suspected foreign body in the left main bronchus in this case the reason being air entry is absent and you got a collapse in mediastinal shift and hyper aeration of the compensatory emphysema on the right side this is the foreign body it is a small piece of nut though the nut was very small the clinical presentation the child had was disproportionately very severe on retrospective examination with the parents we were able to identify that each and every one has uh, may fed the child with some cake at the birthday event the cake had some nut and that has lodged in the airway this is the post removal x ray which shows resolution of the atelectasis on the left side senior a2 a 12 year old male boy the boy is a known asthmatic on low dose steroid inhaler is going to school by is studying about 7th or 8th standard went to school by 9 am the teacher called the parents by 11 am and they told him that the child is having onset of respiratory distress there was no definitive history what happened i will tell later the, since he is a known weezer the parents took him to a private practitioner outside they, he was given nebulizer but there is a history that similar attacks lived by nebulization in the past but not now on examination of the, this child i i saw when i was working in trichy medical college hospital on examination both bilateral air entry was present but there was a significant wheeze in right hemithorax whereas in left side there is no wheeze so as the child uh, once again pg sandal uh, nebulized in our uh, institution also but uh, the same finding persisted so we had a suspicion that something would have been obstruct the obstructing the right main bronchus and there may be so it is not complete and the vis is responsible the foreign body is responsible for the vis but the parents are reluctant to give consent stating that the he had similar episodes in the past it will be relieved by nebulization minimum emission they asking for nebulization and all to the they, they refuse to give consent initially uh, this was the x ray picture it shows mild hyper aeration of the right hemithorax but no significant uh, the findings in the left hemithorax too but clinically there was significant wheeze on the right side especially over the hilar region 
So, after persuading the parents and we got the consent for a probable suspicion of foreign body, bronchoscopy done, foreign body was removed from the main bronchus. I will tell at the end of my presentation what was the foreign body. Scenario 3, 18 months male baby presented with cough, cold, fever 2 days, breathlessness 2 days, no definitive, definitive history of aspiration. On examination, air entry was significantly decreased on the right amythorax. How to play this? How to play the video? I am not able to do it. Okay, don't worry. It's just a clinical picture of respiratory distress in that child. High risk consent was done, taken and the bronchoscopy was done. And this was the ground nut was removed. This is the scenario 4. We leave, the, we, leave, we leave aside the third case. This is 2 year old female child with acute onset of cough one day, breathlessness one day. The child was participating in a wedding function. So the history was there, history of betel nut intake. The child was dysnic and tachypnic and R entry was markedly decreased on right side. So this is the clinical picture, X-ray, initial X-ray. But even though it was sick, there was uh, not much of, you can see a mild hyperarization of the right hemithorax. But the child was disproportionately dis this nick compared to that of the x-ray clinically we have to we had to stabilize the child this child subjected to bronchoscopy and the betel nut was removed they gave an history of intake of betel nut this is the child this was the team which successfully treated the child Scenario 5, 12 year old male with cough and cold 20 days, complaints of breathing difficulty 2 days, clinically stable, on examination air entry was present bilaterally. There was no definitive history. Now this is the x-ray. If you can carefully see, you can see a opaque shadow here. See the x-ray repeated here shows once again. It's a close up view. Yeah, this was the foreign body. This was the button in his jeans t-shirt. The child the boy was biting the shirt which he got aspirated but he didn't reveal the history. This is the post removal picture. Pediatrician's role. I want to stress this thing. See, an examination, pediatrician plays an important role and the evaluation and diagnosis, he is the main person. In addition, he can serve the help of a radiologist. And in assessment and planning, pediatrician plays a main role. And once again, the person who removes may be either a pulmonologist or a pediatrician trained one or an ENT surgeon and definitely invariably needs the support of anesthetist. And uh, the eye risk concern, but no one will be taking the, getting the eye risk concern from the, from the patient or the parents. It is the responsibility of the pediatrician who has to get the iris consent and then endoscopic removal by any one of the... Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for presentation. Nice presentation. Thank, Thank you, sir. Just this is my last slide. I will finish.
and this is post removal care in pico and follow up is the once again done by the pediatrician just i want to show you statistics in our institution 19 2019 we had removed 25 foreign bodies and 20 20 37 and 20 21 32 these are the common foreign bodies which were removed just i, I want to show the take, take home message this is the last slide sorry i am exceeding my time any infant or toddler coming with acute onset of cough, dyspnea, always keep foreign body aspiration. No age is exempt from foreign body. Even three months old, baby, we have seen foreign body. There may be some toddler who can put the foreign body in the child's mouth. Foreign body is possible with negative history, especially in toddlers. With history of toddler, you have to ask. Even if the X-ray doesn't suggest foreign body, go for bronchoscopy if you have strong clinical suspicion of aspiration. Hyperinflation on one side of the lung can be foreign body. Clinical picture not matching with your X-ray chest may be a foreign body. Difficulty in leaning, there may be obstruction in the bronchus. Multiple foreign bodies are common. Migratory foreign bodies are also very common. Prevention is better than cure. Avoid nuts, fruits with seeds, or pomegranate, or custard apple in children, etc. This was the first child uh, who took cake along with his ice cream. This is second child. This is the pen. He was, he was biting the pen with his... Uh, keeping his pen in his mouth. This is the topmost portion. We have got both ends open. So we were able to hear the wheeze on one side. Suppose if he has kept the pen in the rear end, one end is open, other end is broken, he would have presented yearly with airway, airway obstruction which would have led to air trapping or total obstruction. In our experience, what in my personal experience, I follow two golden rules in acute onset of respiratory distress in apparently normal under five children. Always suspect foreign body. And the rule two is never forget rule number one. Thank you.